how is a Kickstarter game from 2014 still in pre-alpha testing almost a decade later? An MMORPG you may not have heard about. This could be because you've never heard about it at all, or because you've got early stage dementia from waiting so long. This is the story of Pantheon, an MMORPG with an incredibly supportive fan base, still looking for the next EverQuest year on year on year. It's the story of a passionate dev team and fan base that some have suggested are bordering on delusional, judging from comments on YouTube, dreaming on Reddit about how great the game will be. If they were in Texas instead of on Reddit, I think by this point, they'd have built a compound and been surrounded by the FBI a long time ago. But this is getting ahead of ourselves a bit. Let's go back to where this began. Ah, the world of Kickstarter MMOs. In the mid-20-teens, I suspect YouTubers have made about as much money off this genre of game, or not game, as the producers of the games themselves, unless you count Star Citizen, because oh my god, those guys made so much money. But today in this video, I want to look at a lesser discussed kickstarting fiasco. But before I do, I want to be clear that I'm not in this way insinuating any ill will or impropriety on the part of the game's developer, Visionary Realms. This is a deep dive into the history of the game, the issues it's faced in development, and its, um, <clears throat> remarkably loyal fan base. Pantheon Rise of the Fallen started as a spark in the eye of legendary MMORPG designer Brad McQuaid back in 2014, when the Kickstarter was launched by his dev team Visionary Realms. The promise was to create a modern MMORPG that had the feel of older MMORPGs like EverQuest of which McQuaid played an important and central developmental role as head producer. The funding goal was set at $800,000, but the campaign raised only $460,657 from 3,157 backers. Does anyone else find it that difficult to read numbers? I mean, I do this for a job and I still find reading large numbers difficult. So, one thing about this is that I find it incredibly suspicious that someone can make an MMORPG for $800,000. I think if you could, a lot of other people would do it. But clearly, this was for, like, an initial stage of development. Maybe not the most responsible Kickstarter ever, but hey, this was 2014. Nonetheless, development continued even though they failed their Kickstarter. They instead decided to continue with a tactic that would be employed by many other Kickstarter MMORPGs of this era. As many other MMORPGs of this era did, <clears throat> Chronicles of Illyria, they began selling pledges directly to their fans, and this seemed to be enough to initially get the game off the ground. These pledges promised a variety of things, including access to early builds of the game and beta testing. It was later then revealed at this point that the entire Visionary Realms team had been working, quote, completely pro bono during this period. And, given the complexity and long-term scope of MMORPG development, this point should have already been a major cause for concern. But most fans believed in the project, the previous history of McQuaid's success with EverQuest, and perhaps just exhaustion with the current MMORPG market at that time, which was aggressively saturated with low clones and Korean MMORPGs. And also, this was before the EverQuest revival really took off with EverQuest's re-release of time-limited progression servers that would become trendy a few years later, and uh, also um, uh, the progress of games like Project 199 with their EverQuest green server that also brought a lot of people back to EverQuest. In short, there just wasn't a lot of EverQuest-style stuff to play. But before we go further into the development of the game, it's it seems important, especially if you did not play these types of games uh, because you're not old or because you just missed out. Uh, it seems important to explain the nature of the game and why it held such a captive fan base in the world of MMORPGs. Prior to the release and massive success of World of Warcraft, most MMORPGs were very difficult games. Not that WoW doesn't have its difficult bits. I mean, hardcore raiding is difficult in WoW, I don't deny that. But it's not a difficult game in the way that EverQuest was a difficult game. In EverQuest, you had no map, at least initially. If you got lost and died in EverQuest, you don't respawn and lose some durability. You die and have to return to your corpse to retrieve your items. 
between there being no map and you dropping all of your items when you die, dying could be absolutely terrifying. If you die at the bottom of a dungeon, you need people to help you get back to your body. In original EverQuest, friends and community weren't just an add-on, a nice thing to have to supplement the gameplay. They were essential to your survival in the game. And if you didn't have the friends, couldn't find a helpful stranger to go and drag your corpse out of hell, well, I think it was 48 hours later, all your items that you could have worked years to acquire would be gone. This was a hardcore world where a train of monsters, a train in EverQuest speak is when one player pulls a bunch of monsters through the dungeon in an attempt to escape from a mistaken encounter, a train could go through the entire dungeon killing everyone, resulting in multiple people begging for multiple people to then come and help them. This was a communal world and danger was everywhere. And modern MMORPGs still to this day really struggle to get that feeling back. And so people wanted that feeling back. They were eager to stake everything upon reviving this type of game. And with Brad McQuaid, the genius behind EverQuest, behind the project, it was just too good to pass up. But, as was forewarned by the pro bono comment in April 2014, Brad McQuaid announced that progress on Pantheon had to be put on hold, as the team had to leave to find other sources of income. This makes sense because there is little possibility of sustained development without any stable source of income. The funding issues that began with the initial failure of the Kickstarter were continuing. A game of this size cannot be made on goodwill alone. This was clearly a passion project, but one that was incredibly underfunded for its scope and depth. On January 7, 2015, Brad McQuaid announced that Chris Perkins, who had originally joined the team as their composer, was being promoted to creative director, and that at this point the team had begun receiving some money or some form of remuneration in return for their work on the game. Then, in March 2016, Visionary Realms began to stream some of their content on Twitch, and they began to reach out to content creators that would be sympathetic to the game, and at later points, allowing them to play very early builds of it. If I'm totally honest with you, this is the point at which I began to have some serious doubts about the game and began to turn from really, really hyped and super looking forward to it to incredibly suspicious. The early builds just didn't look early, they looked curated, and the streams with content creators seemed much more like promotional material rather than a genuine exploration of the game. This was a promotion to raise funds, not a group of creators showing off their work to the masses. But as you know, no creators can work for free. And that's why this video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Anyways, going on. On April 26th, Raid Shadow Legends, if you want, reach out, man. I'll take your money. Anyways, on April 26th, and if not, like and subscribe, guys, because I got to get that Raid Shadow Legends money at some point. On April 26th, 2017, Visionary Realms announced that Series A funding had completed. This would allow them to continue the game development up until around November 18th, 2019. On this day, the MMO world received a shock that didn't just harm the Pantheon community, but the EverQuest community more broadly, and heck, anyone that cares about MMORPGs. Brad McQuaid had died at his home at a relatively young age in his 50s. Brad McQuaid's skill at game design was the cause of so many of my own childhood memories, and his loss to the MMORPG community cannot be understated. But development continued on. This led to Chris Perkins being further promoted to creative and programming producer, as well as creative director, taking over the game more or less entirely as its creative and design lead. But more bad news was to follow in October 14th, 2020. Visionary Realms published on their social media that they spent the last few months redoing the game's code base. Now, if you're not a game developer, you might think, ah, that's not that bad. But if you've ever tried to make a game, and I mean a small game, you will know well, the level of delay that this would cause the project. 
and this for me sent off big red flags. Keeping in mind that the game had been in development for six years at this point, this far into development, revising the code base for the game's major backend systems was something, frankly, inconceivable. Something that if you know the slightest bit about MMORPG development, especially given that MMORPG games require huge backend infrastructure systems to function, holding the data of players and server structures, etc., this would spell huge delays. For MMORPGs, their core code and architecture is the thing that needs to be sorted out really before any proper game testing or game development can begin. It is the skeleton upon which all the muscle and flesh of game development is placed. And at this point, rumors again began to circulate that Visionary Realms were once again running out of money. On January 19th, 2021, Visionary Realms announced that they had received some, but not entirely, the funding necessary to continue with development. And over the course of the next year, they would continue to raise funds from a variety of sources. And by July 21st, 2020, they announced that they had secured at least $2 million in funding from private investors. This would allow them to continue development, and this figure would further rise as they continued their rounds of funding. And this more or less gets us up to date. On one hand, Pantheon seems to be in a better place funding-wise than it's ever been before. But, after almost a decade of the incredible perseverance of this dev team in the face of monetary difficulties, the loss of their founder, the game is still in development with public alpha testing to begin sometime soon. But this, in my opinion, I mean the public alpha, means very little because the game for everyone that's followed it has been on the verge of public alpha for almost half a decade. And with the occasional streams of the game content, to be fair, at this point it's very difficult to keep track of the development of the game. As the progression has been far from linear, there have been revisions of the art style, the aforementioned change in code base, core systems. There are massive concerns about scope creep with the amount of races and classes available, the size of the game on launch, and systems such as climbing. So, what does the future hold? Well, I don't think there's much positive to say about Pantheon Rise of the Fallen's current state, other than the new well of funding it's received, which in itself is remarkable for a game that's been in development this long, <clears throat> other than Star Citizen. With the huge time that's passed, though, the game no longer looks good at all. If anything, I find the nostalgia of EverQuest's original graphics if they were to be given a, a new gloss of paint in the style of more modern retro games, would probably outperform, at least emotionally for me, the graphics we're seeing from Pantheon. Given how many AAA MMORPGs go free to play or shut down entirely within years of launch, a company that has already shown its financial weaknesses so far away from launch is just unlikely to succeed. So. This is one area where I am critical of the development team. While they have mind-blowingly little to show of a game after almost a decade of development, like literally there are free MMORPG projects that have totally surpassed them. Hellgate 2038, 38, 39, they have completely remade the Hellgate game themselves. Um, Ultima Outlands, completely redesigned Ultima Online from scratch. These are free development teams. Warhammer Return of Reckoning, a complete redesign of Warhammer's code base. Uh, City of Heroes. All of these MMORPGs are fan projects that have completely redesigned a game from the, from the ground up and reverse engineered the back end. And at the same time, this far into development, it doesn't look like Pantheon Rise of the Fallen have completed their back end. And this really is where I start to get annoyed. While they haven't completed these basic tasks, they are nonetheless incredibly active on YouTube and on social media with content that is contentless, hour-long podcasts, screenshots of game dev, and heavily curated content where streamers play the game coached and guided by the developers themselves. And this type of content has been consistent in its character, type, and quality for almost a decade. Two men sat on a stream for two hours daydreaming about the things that will one day be in their game. I understand why they're doing it. They rely on pledges to keep the development going. 
but when you're taking people's money after almost a decade without giving anything back, maybe there's a point at which your passion for the game is leading you to behave in ways maybe you shouldn't. At what point does continually feeding your fan base empty content, none of which is anything like a game, start making this more of a cult of belief than a fan base who are invested in something fun? Why the endless dev live streams of hours upon hours? There is a persistent effort to constantly feed the fan base something without ever realizing anything in particular. Even if the goal is small, it would still be something. I mean, even the Chronicles of Valeria people got that little game on Unity. <laughs> All in all, Pantheon Rise of the Fallen is an interesting insight into the early days of Kickstarter and MMORPGs, the passion of the devs, and the amazing ability of these sorts of projects to get fans into a cult-like state of defending each delay no matter what the cost. Once you've devoted the time and money, it has to be worth it, right? I remember someone on Reddit telling me back when the game was six years in development that six years was a perfectly normal time for MMORPG development and that the game could be expected at any moment. The cult still exists, but will the game ever? Well, we'll have to wait and see.